up guys this is the second upload for this week on this video I thought I'd do a little tech tip corner um, and today we're on the pot this is a vintage uh, stack pull pot mostly found in Telecasters and Stratocasters Fender P bases jazz bases but uh, I got my friend sent it to me to try to fix it it has no uh, no reading can't get a reading out of it but it's fully functional and it turns so we're going to dig into this pot and see if we can get it corrected. And I'm going to show you all about that now. I'm going to disassemble it. So see you in a minute. All right, so we're back here. Uh, first thing I like to do when I'm doing anything kind of intricate with small moving parts like this is I give myself a little bit of a work area. You know, um, I get my necessary tools out. So for this, I'm pretty sure I know what it is. I think it's a dirty spot on the trace. Uh, I got a couple of Q-tips for cleaning, small flathead screwdriver for disassembling pair of uh, vice grip pliers and my voltmeter uh, right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna check the value of the pot too just to confirm our suspicions that the pot is dead we got nothing I don't know if you guys can pick that up in the camera but we have nothing and I'll check everywhere I can in the center we still got nothing so we know we're dealing with a dead pot So now what we'll do is we'll disassemble it and I'll show you what to do with that on these these older pots, you can see these little clipped, these little edges here that are bent over. There's a basically, it's a mechanical, you know, uh, device that just it just holds it together. So we're gonna gently pry those back. If you go too far, you can snap these off, and then you get the loose pot crackling, making noise. We don't want that. So I'll get this apart for you really quick. Again, I'm using my finger behind the other tab just to make sure I'm not bending it out of the way too far and breaking it, you know. Also trying not to stab myself because bleeding's not fun. So now that we got them all bent out of the way, we can start a disassembly. So I'll, I'll try to, when I take my parts out, I'll leave them in an order you know, this isn't too, this isn't my first time I've done this, so I know which way to go about it. But I'll leave them out in a way so I can remember which way they go back together. So we'll start with this the back cover, and then sometimes you get a little stuck in there. There's the shaft section of the pot. and right there, I think I don't know if you can pick it up with the camera right in here. I think is our issue. I see a a discolored spot right here. So we're gonna clean those up. But we're gonna clean the entire pot. <clears throat> and here's the trace that it rides on. This is basically what gives you your potentiometer, your increments all the way around. And we'll clean those too. And you'll see as soon as I use some of the solvent on it, you'll see how dirty it gets. So I'll do that now. Cleaning the pots, I like to use the keg stuff, and uh, I've been using the, the Deoxid D5 for a while. But my buddy Eric Roach, who is a guitar tech to the stars and an amp builder himself, uh, he just hit me to this fader cleaner, and he said it's much better and it's safer on the pot. So we're going to go with that on this one. Uh, I'm going to clean some of the hard parts with this one, and then with the, the trace parts, I'm going to use the, the fader. So basically what I'll do is I'll just... Give myself a little deoxit on a Q-tip, and I'll start cleaning everything. You know, and you can see instantly it puddles itself up. You know, so I'll get all that out of there. So you're basically starting with a clean surface, and you can see how fast. So that's clean. Now we come over to this trace here. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but it is quite black here and just a little bit of this takes it right off they're actually shiny now and exposed metal so that's kind of what we're going for we want a good connect a good contact so I'll switch to the fader stuff now so you guys can see what that does This is essential, you know, I think like uh, 
I always like to keep my all the mechanical parts on my guitar tip top shape because you know I take pride in that and uh, I take pride in having my stuff sounding good so this is something I do all the time in my own stuff especially with the older stuff I like to preserve the life of the old pots you know like I said this is an old stack pole I think the date on it is uh, 18th week of 66 you know so that's looking fairly clean now fairly shiny there's no more black corrosion on there and then we'll take this trace that it rides on here what we'll do is we'll use a little more on the one clean side now I'll show you this the side of this tip is totally clean and I'll show you exactly what I mean <clears throat> I said again we're just making sure we're getting everything and then just for good measure this doesn't really have any contact points but we'll we'll clean up where the shaft rides see that it's gonna slow your pot down so we'll get that all prepped up So, now we can try dis reassembling it. And I've done this a few times, so I kind of remember which way the parts go. We'll start here. Get the shaft in there. You don't really realize how confusing these how-to videos are till you have to do them. So now we're assembled, and this is the tricky part. I start with the big tabs, and I try to bend one over as fast as I can to get it to hold itself. Then I go to the other side. So at least this way you're starting with something like that. You know, you have a few of the tabs bent over. You got the two two main tabs bent over. Now they're holding it. And then I'll walk around with the pliers and grab the rest of them. And I like them to seat. I don't like a ripple in them. I like them, you know, to seat flush. So I always use a kind of rolling motion when I'm doing it just to make sure they're locked in. I like using the vice grips because you can adjust the amount of clamp on it where you don't crinkle any metal, but you can squeeze down just the right amount you need to seat that pot, seat those, those little fingers that hold it together, and you're not worried about over squeezing it and crushing it. Looks like we'll get the last one here. Check your work. Make sure you're flowing free. Everything's spinning back and forth. Nice, nice. Beautiful. Set your bolt mirror up, you know, to ohms. Resistance, we call that. <clears throat> Get my alligator clips. I have the red on the positive lead. I have my black on my negative lead. go we got some life 271k and you can also check the way it's working by using the middle wiper stud and this pot seems to be working all right now so there you go there's a quick little video um, again for you guys that got a clean moving parts three-way switches pots 
Um, I love the Deoxys stuff and the Fader F5 stuff seems to be working pretty good. Um, I also use this for some of the other parts too. So check both of these out. These are staples. I always keep these with my tools because I always end up using them. So there you go. There's the 1966 stack bowl pot all repaired. And we can put this back in the Telecaster and bring it back to life. Keep it 100% original while just fixing what was broke. See you guys later.